Hey guys, Chris again. Just thought I'd do a uh, quick deal on this. Uh, in case you haven't heard of it, which I don't know how many people have, this is a three doodle. I just got it in the mail today. I pre ordered this sometime early last year, and it finally uh, got to me. Not pre order, it was a Kickstarter campaign. Quick correction there. And I thought I'd uh, do an unboxing and review video. So here we go. Let me put my glasses on. Sorry about the glare. Hipster. Anyway. So I've already cut the uh, security tape there and looked inside, but so we've got uh, right here, we've got three packs of these plastic rods. These are all ABS. I didn't order any PLA because I really don't know what the difference is. Um, so we got bright colors, more neutralish colors, I guess you could say. And these are neon and glow in the dark plastic. An AC adapter, which uh, is 110 and 220 compatible, so that's nice. And the actual unit itself. Ta da! And it comes with this nice silicone cap to help protect the heating element. You've got a mode selector switch to change between ABS off and PLA. I believe PLA requires a higher temperature, I don't really remember. You got your fan speed controls for how fast it extrudes it and uh, for the power jack plugs in and this right here these are really neat uh, addition to it these are uh, I believe they're CNC mounting points I remember reading about it in one of the project updates a while back so if you want to if you have a CNC machine or something somewhere that it can mount to this will essentially become a, a 3D printer because this becomes the print head and uh, you just Start it up and let the computer control where it goes. So really neat, really neat stuff. And uh, I plan on you know, having some fun with it, and I hope that it comes in handy for some projects. So let's see what I make with it. All right, so this is going to be a time lapse of me drawing uh, a catapult from uh, the 3Doodle website. They have a bunch of templates that you can follow. This whole process originally took about 28 minutes total, and uh, here I've compressed it down to three minutes. So you can see there, there's the first side of it, of the support structure. I would honestly say for this one, you probably want uh, the stronger plastic. I used ABS. ABS is more flexible, which I thought would be probably good for this, but um, honestly, I'm going to try PLA if I decide to try this again. And, uh, it's kind of interesting trying to figure out what the, what, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, what order to do the lines in because you're always going to have overlap. Uh, one of the nice things though is that the plastic will stick to itself if it's laid directly onto it so you don't have to worry too much about it and then I've walked away to go do something and I'm back. Yeah, so I've done, you can see down there in the lower right hand side, the two sides and the back support. And I'm doing the main actual flinger right now. And uh, once I get done with that circle, I have to fill in that gray part. And uh, I finally figured out how to make the plastic actually back out. There I am trying to get the rest of the silver out so that the actual holding pan will be purple. thought I'd get creative with different colors and stuff, but uh, it is what it is. I got the scissors out because when you retract a piece of a filament from the device, the end gets all melted. You can kind of see it there on the purple. And, uh, so I'm going to put the silver back in to build up the rest of the basket. This thing doesn't fling very far, but it's kind of a fun little project to kind of demonstrate um, ways to build a 3D object. Here, you know, I'm building four flat pieces. I'm going to kind of use plastic welding to put them all together. Retracting the silver again, cutting the end off, peeling it off, and then figured I'd use up the rest of my purple to do the plastic welding. I ended up surprisingly not balancing very well, even though all the pieces are as uniform as you can get with a device like this. 
uh, when you're doing plastic welding you just hold the two edges together and squeeze the molten plastic in between them and when it cools it grabs onto them. Pretty neat. Alright, and I should be just about done. Yep. Alright guys, so after that time lapse, um, as you can see I made the catapult and I got new glasses. No, I'm just messing with you guys. Uh, this, these are actually uh, another template that I found on there. As you can see this is all three doodled. Alright, I can't see on the line. So, anyway, uh, as you can see this is all three doodled as well and then I just plastic welded here and um, it's uh, this since this is the ABS plastic it's actually pretty flexible uh, I don't want to snap the joints or anything like that but uh, I actually think it's probably too flexible for this little catapult but uh, I'm going to try and fling a two euro cent coin <laughs> yeah that's real impressive uh, I wonder if I had made this part stronger like see how thin these are compared to here if it uh, you know the rigidity would make it better but bending all the way back and it fell out yeah so anyway we'll drop this up uh, I think the tool is pretty cool uh, I hope I can find some good uses for it if you go to the3doodler.com you can pre-order one for about $99 and it comes with a pack of plastic I'm not getting in sponsored or any endorsements or anything like that. Uh, like I said earlier, I got mine through Kickstarter uh, for about 75 but uh, I still think it's worth it at $100. And once they release the information on how to make it extrude without pressing the buttons, I think it'll be pretty. It'll be a pretty cool way to make your own 3D printer for small objects. So anyway, guys, wrapping it up. Over and out. Watch six.